What's up everyone, it's Steph, and today we're gonna learn how to use Petite View to create a cool little YouTube search project using the YouTube API. Petite View is a new framework, it's only a few months old, and it's a subset of View, so it uses all the View familiar syntax, making it super easy to pick up if you're familiar with the View framework. It's way smaller though, it's only 5.8 kilobytes, so this makes it a great option to use in a project where using the entire View framework might be overkill. I think the best use case is if you have an existing project where you just need to sprinkle some minimal front-end interactions. Also, if you're prototyping and you know that you're going to eventually upgrade to Nuxt or Vue, I think Petite Vue would be a great option to use because like I already said, it uses Vue compatible syntax, so the switch between the two would be really simple. In this video, I'm going to first dive a little bit deeper into what Petite Vue is, then I'll show you how to add it to your project and use it, and then finally how to create this YouTube search app. Before I get into any of that, I want to show you a little sneak peek of what we're going to be building and then we will get started. So here's a demo of what we're going to be creating towards the end of this video. It's a really simple YouTube search app. We're going to be using the YouTube API to fetch videos associated with the YouTube channel using that channel's ID. It will return the 20 most recent videos, which will display. And if you click one, it will bring you to that video on YouTube. If you want to hop to the part of the video where we actually build this, I'm going to bookmark it down below, so feel free to do that. But before we start creating this, I want to talk a little bit more about what Petite View is, how to add it to your project, and how to use it. So let's get started. Okay, so I pulled up the Petite View docs, and the first thing we see is what I've already mentioned, that it's really small in size. It's only 5.8 kilobytes, which is a lot smaller than standard view, which for comparison is about 58.8 kilobytes. And then we also see that it uses view compatible syntax, which again, I've already touched on. This just makes it really easy for view developers to pick up on it. You don't really have to learn much. And if you want to transition between Petite View and Standard View or Nuxt, it's going to be a really simple transition. Now, one of the larger differences between Petite View and Standard View is that Petite View mutates the DOM directly, whereas Standard View uses the virtual DOM, which if you're not familiar with the virtual DOM, you can kind of compare it to a blueprint. So it has all of the details and instructions needed to create the DOM. But since it doesn't require all the heavyweight parts that go into the DOM, it's really easy to create and change. And then you can use the virtual DOM to figure out what needs to be done with the actual DOM to get the two trees to match. So this speeds up Vue because it's only making the necessary changes to the DOM. So you're probably wondering why Petite Vue doesn't use it. And the answer is that by mutating the DOM directly, it doesn't need a compiler. So this greatly decreases its size. But this is a good time to point out that its small size is not the only thing that Petite View offers. It also improves progressive enhancement, which is the idea that the most basic content and interaction should be available to the user first. So no matter what your internet connection is like or what kind of computer you're using, you should be able to see the most basic content of the website. So instead of waiting for a font to load or some crazy CSS animation or loading HTML through a script, you will at least be able to see something even if you have the worst internet connection. If you want to learn more about any of these topics, I recommend reading through my blog, which I'm going to link in the description below. I kind of take a deeper dive into these topics. But before we get started, I just want to scroll down in the docs and show you that while many of these standard view features are supported by Petite View, not all of them are. So it's definitely going to be beneficial for you to just double check what isn't supported before starting a project. And with that being said, let's open up our text editor and get started. So here I have my project open and it's literally just a single HTML file and I'm running that in my browser. As you can see, I have no dependencies other than Tailwind, which I just copy and pasted this link in. So let's get started by adding Petite View to our project. And we can do this by just adding the CDN. It's super simple. So I'm going to type that in here. It's just HTTPS colon slash slash um, unpackage dot com slash Petite View. And then there are two attributes we have to include here. The first is defer. And this attribute really improves progressive enhancement because it makes sure that the HTML is parsed before any script is executed. The second one is the init attribute. And this attribute tells Petite View to automatically query and initialize all elements that are using Petite View. Okay, so next we have to go down to our HTML and add the vscope directive. This tells Petite View what portions of the page are going to be using it. And you can also use the vscope directive to pass in states that a particular element will have access to. 
So in this example, I passed in count, which has a value of zero. And if we want to display this in our div, we can do so using our familiar view syntax. So the double curly braces and just put count within. So I'm going to add my count is, and if we go refresh our page, you can see that it's displaying our count. So what if we want to change count on a button click? Let's say increase it by one every time we click the button. How would we do that? Well, first I'm going to add a button and then I'm going to wrap this count within a div. And then to my button using our familiar view syntax, I can just say at click and I'll say count plus plus. So it's going to add one to count every time this button's click. For the text, I'm just going to say increase by one. And then I'm going to add some tailwind styling just to make it actually look like a button. Now, if we go to our page and give it a refresh, we can test it out and you can see it works exactly how we'd expect it to, just like normal view. All right, so I want to go over one more feature that is exclusive to Petite View, and this is VFX, which is used to execute inline reactive statements. So here I'm just going to say VFX equals, and I'm going to say if count is greater than three, then we're going to set the element text content to count. I'm going to add some CSS to make this text red. And then if we refresh our page and click the button a few times, you can see that once it gets past three, we see our red text and it is displaying count. So in this example, the effect is using count, which is a reactive data source. So every time count changes, it's rerunning and it's evaluating if count is greater than three. And if it is, it's setting the text content to our count. So if we don't want to auto init like we did in this example, we can remove our init attribute from our script tag and instead we can use the ES module build. So let's go over an example of how we would do that. First, I'm going to cut out this SRC and we can delete all these attributes. We no longer need them. And I'm going to add a type and set it to module. Next, we have to import create app from the SRC that I cut earlier. So I'm just going to paste that in and add question mark module to the end of it. And that's going to allow us to use the module type syntax. So now we're going to use our create app and I'm going to add dot mount for right now. I'll talk more about this in a bit, but we can go down to where we have our V scope and we're passing in count and we can delete the count. We don't need to pass anything in here anymore. I'm going to keep the V scope though. Then up in create app, we can add any reactivity we want. So I'm going to add count. And I'll also add a method called increment, which once again, just increases count by one. So down in our HTML, this vscope, it's worth noting that while we don't pass any reactivity in here, we still need the vscope to kind of hint to petite view that this element needs to be processed. This element is using petite view. Um, now down in our button, let's replace the count plus plus with our method increment. And then if we go and refresh our page, we should see that it still works the same way. And it sure does. That's great. OK, so now what if we want to explicitly mount this element? We can do that by deleting our vscope. And we're going to add an ID. I'm just going to call it app. And then up where we use create app, where we have mount, we can just add pound app. And this is going to explicitly mount that single element. So now you could have multiple petite view apps that control different regions on the same page. Next, I want to go over how to create components using Petite View, and we can start off by just removing all of this reactivity. And up here, I'm going to add a function. This is going to be the function that has a reactivity for our component. So I'm going to call it counter since it's a counter component. And something cool about Petite View is we can still pass in props to our components. It is a little bit different than standard view, and I'll walk you through that. But for right now, just pass in our props parameter. Within this function, we're going to have all of our reactivity. So let's add count again. And this is going to be equal to props.startingCount. And then I'm going to add our increment method again, which is still just going to increase count by one. I'm also going to add a method called mounted. And within it, I'll just log I mounted, just so I can demo to you how we can call methods whenever a component mounts. And this is a function. So we need to return this, which I forgot to do. So I'm going to cut this out, add return, and just paste it back in. And lastly, we can just take our counter function and pass it into create app. I no longer want to mount this to our ID, so I'm going to remove that and I'll remove it down in our component as well. And I'll once again add vscope. This time we're going to use our counter method and we're going to pass in the props as the parameters. So the only prop we actually have is this starting count. So I'll paste that in and it's going to be zero. And then just to show you that this is a reusable component, I'm going to copy this and paste it. But for this second component, starting count will be 20. 
So let's save it and refresh our page. And we can see we have two components. One, the count is zero. The other one is 20. While this is a fine way to create components, there is a more efficient way that doesn't require you to repeat your HTML over and over again, and that's using templates. So let's add a template tag, and then I'm gonna give this template an ID of counter-template. And now I'm gonna copy this HTML within our old component and paste it in our template. If we go up to our counter function and just add dollar sign template, and then we'll add our ID, which was counter-template, now we can use this HTML over and over again without repeating it. In our old components, I'm gonna remove all of that inner HTML and I'm gonna move that CSS or Tailwind styling from the outer div of our old component to our template. And then I'm once again gonna remove those two things from our other component as well. Now, if you save and we go back to our browser and refresh the page, we should still see our two components. And we do, but it doesn't look like the styling that I moved from the outer div to the template tag worked. I think you cannot add styling to the template tag and it has to be to a div. So let's add another outer div and paste our content within that. And our styling will go on the outer div. And now if we refresh the page, we see that our styling is working. So this is more efficient because we don't have to copy and paste that HTML over and over again. And we can use the same template for different components as many times as we want. The very last thing before we start building our YouTube app, I forgot to show you how to call a method when a component is mounted. So to do that, you just say at mounted and then just whatever method you want to call. So I have this mounted method that just logs I am mounted. I'm going to call that. And if we go check our console, you'll see that it is getting called. Now that we have an understanding of what Petite View is and how to use it, we can start creating our cool YouTube app. So I'm gonna remove all of this HTML and just have a single div. If we go up to our counter function, I'm gonna rename this to container and we're not gonna have any props on this. So I'm gonna remove the props parameter and I will also remove all the reactivity within it. Back down in our HTML, I'm going to add vscope and we're gonna be using our container function which has no props so we can just leave that blank for right now. And then within this div, I wanna add an input and I'll style this with some Tailwind styling. And then I'm gonna model it to channel ID, which is gonna be our first reactive data source. So we also have to add this up to our container function and it will just start off as an empty string. If we wanna test our input, we can just add a P tag with our double curly braces and put channel ID within it. So as we type in our input, we can just make sure that channel ID is updating, which it is, so that's great. I'm gonna remove that P tag and add a button below our input. It will say submit, and then I'm gonna add some Tailwind styling just to make it rounded red with white text. And then when this button is clicked, we want to call a method that will use the YouTube API to fetch the videos. So let's call this method get videos. Then we have to add get videos up in our container function, and this will be asynchronous. So let's say async get videos. And we're gonna use fetch because we're gonna do this all on the client side. We won't be using the server at all. And I'm just gonna paste in my YouTube URL. Uh, I will paste this in the description below for you as well. Here you can see we need to pass in our API key as well as the channel ID. And we will already know what the channel ID is because they typed it into the input. So let's put our channel ID reactive data source here, just saying this.channel ID. And then where we have our API key, I will currently put it as this.key. And then we have to define keys. So right below channel ID, I'll just add key. And I'm going to go get my API key and paste it in here. So I have created and pasted in my API key. So back down to our get videos function. I'm going to define a variable called channel info and set this equal to it. And this will return a promise. So we have to use await. Then I'm going to define another variable called response. And this will be the response. So we're gonna say channel info.json, which should return a JSON. But once again, this will be a promise, so we have to await it. And then I'm just gonna console log this to make sure it's being called correctly with no errors. And what we really care about is the response.items, so I'm gonna log response.items. Back in our browser, let's refresh the page and click submit. This should call our API, and we should see an array of 20 items, which we do. So that means everything worked correctly. So now that our API is working correctly, let's add an array called videos. And this will just start off as an empty array. And then after we fetch our videos, let's set our response.items equal to videos. So now we have this reactive data source that we can use on our HTML. 
Down in our HTML, I'm gonna create a couple of divs and add some really basic Tailwind styling just so we can see each item. And then we're gonna iterate through our video's array and I'm just gonna display the JSON associated with each video. Once you are done, make sure you save your changes and we can head back to our browser and refresh the page, click Submit, and we will see the JSON of each item in our video's array displayed in a pink box. So now I wanna create a component for each video like we've already learned how to do using templates. So let's add a template tag and I'll give it the ID video-component. Now I'm gonna be passing three props into this. The first one will be the video ID, the second will be the thumbnail URL, and the third will be the title. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a link and this link is gonna to go to the video when it's clicked. So I will just put for the href youtube.com slash watch and then we'll pass in our video ID. I'm gonna add my view syntax here and then I'm gonna add an image and this image is going to be our thumbnail which the SRC is gonna be passed in as our thumbnail prop so I can just add that there. Lastly, I want to display the title so I'm just gonna add a P tag and our double curly braces with our title prop within. Now we need to create our function for this prop. I'm gonna call it videos, and we will pass in our props parameter because we have props. Let's bind our template with our template ID. Then we will set all of our data. So we will have video ID, which is props.video ID, our thumbnail, which is props.thumbnail, and our title, which is props.title. Then back down in our HTML, we can delete this video, and we're gonna use vscope so that petite view knows the process this element using our video function. And we are gonna have three props that we're passing in. It's our video ID, thumbnail, and title. So now we just need to add the value associated with each of these parameters. Once we're finished with this, let's go ahead and save and refresh our browser and click Submit. Okay, I am not seeing our component, so I'm gonna click the console and see if we have any errors. And we do. Okay, so history repeats itself. First off, this should be a dollar sign and I forgot to return once again. So let's cut and paste. Now, if I go back to the browser and refresh and click submit, we see our link component displaying the thumbnail and title. Now that we have the backbone of our app, we're successfully making our API request, we have our components, and we're displaying all the information we want on the page, I'm gonna go and just make it look prettier, add a better UI using Tailwind, I'm not going to film this part, but I am going to link the repo down below if you want to go look at it or clone it. So here is the final product. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm just going to use my channel's ID to search, and you can see the UI is a lot better. Um, I added an iframe so you can play the most recent video, and it displays all videos. If you click on one, it will take you to that video, and I also added this clear search button so you can make another search. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And more importantly, I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And if you use Petite View, I'd love to get your opinion in the comment section below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.